Hi there guys and welcome to the next tutorial by GemVFX. Gary here once again. Uh, this tutorial is number 50. 50. I've reached a landmark as far as I'm concerned. 50 tutorials. I never expected to do any more than probably about 40 something. And that would have been purely just the modifiers. Um, but here I am and I'm still going and I'm loving doing it and I'm pouring out as much as I can. Uh, today it's actually a very short one. Uh, yes, it really is. No word of a lie. Um, and it's something that I want to show you that I discovered. Um, I thought there was an older way of doing what I'm about to do. And I have no idea at which point this changed. But um, yeah, basically what it is, it's about animating cameras, but not in the way you think. Um, this is about essentially doing live edits in your animation timeline. Now I have done this before and at some point it may have changed and I may not have just realized it or it may be that this has always been there and no one's told me. Um, and I'm not going to complain, but uh, shall we just crack on with it? Why not? I'll tell you what, right, so here we go. Now you can see there's already something there in front of you. This is a car that I downloaded uh, free off of the Tinterwebs. I think I got it from Home 3D actually. And uh, which by the way, not a sponsor, but Hum 3D, if you're looking for a car and if you're working for a production company or you've got the money to afford to buy yourself a car, a real sort of like, this is a model of a Vauxhall Viva or this is sort of like a, you know, a, a Discovery or you want a Mercedes or an Audi or whatever, Hum 3D, in all honesty, has pretty much every single car out there. And they vary in price from free, obviously, to higher value cars, but the quality of the cars, all of them, is astonishing. I, I'm not. I've got nothing against Turbo Squid. I think they're amazing, but the cars in Hum 3D, I am utterly been blown away by. Uh, so I recommend having a look at them at the very least. Um, as I say, not a sponsor. Just credit where it's due. They're great. Um, and so I've got the car of Hum 3D, and I was using it for a test on something, and I really <laughs> found out. Um, this camera thing, which really, really surprised me. But basically, in a lot of cases, when you're doing uh, shots with cars, what you tend to do is you tend to do a bunch of shots, like here's a, a traveling shot and it's just rotating. It's just the bonnet of the car. And it happens over 10 seconds. And then we have different, I've basically had to build a bunch of cameras for the purposes of what I was trying to do. And then I've got what I call a cam, dust cam. And that's because it's designed specifically as the first shot. So it goes, hmm. And there's a little bit of animation. You can see it just here. There's a little bit of animation just on the front of this. Some of it's um, some of it is coming from uh, the little bit of noise added on as a modifier, and uh, particularly on the, where are you? The rotation. Which one? There we go. The Y rotation. So it goes just drops in there. But it's just nice. It's like Phoom. back to their sound effects again, and. <laughs> So that's like, so that's obviously the sort of the first camera shot that I would want, but then I'd like a, and then I've got one later on for when it's sort of like, when it passes, let me just move this over here, when it passes the camera, just be quite nice to have, you know, oh, there's some my camera over here, so it's like, poof, goes past the camera, and then you've got a, a rear end of the car, which is just traveling with it, and again, that's using modifiers for a little bit of noise into it. Then we've got a top down shot of the car, which is towards the end, so it sort of like comes up and it goes, vroom. And then you've got a wheel shot. Now this is actually my absolute favorite shot of the whole thing. So it's just just ever so slightly bouncing. That wheel is actually spinning very fast, um, but you don't see the motion blur and even in the, in, the, in the view. If there is a way, someone please tell me because it would be nice, but uh, it's not expected. Uh, but it does, you do see it when you render it, uh, which I'm sure everyone already knows. So, uh, but I saw I've got this bunch of cameras. I've got you know, this bonnet one, I've got this dust one, I've got a long one, and I've got the rear one, I've got the top one, and I've got the wheel one. And they're all happening during the course of this 10 seconds. Now, what would normally happen in this sort of situation is that you would sh you would basically do a play blast or a viewport render, however you want to say it, and of each one, and then you go into a non-linear editor uh, such as the one that's inside of Blender, but possibly you might use one to Resolve, or you might be using uh, Premiere or Final Cut Pro or whatever. You know, you've got all these wonderful editing tool sets, but sometimes you just want to see it looking right. And you want to be sure you've got it right. And you think, right, okay, well, I've got all these cameras and they all do things and they do things at particular times. I want to see them in here. 
Now you've always been able to do this because what you can do is you can create a marker down here. I can create a marker in, in here anyway by pressing M. So if I say go to the first frame, press M, and that'll just tell you what the offset is, and then you can, you can move it to any single frame. It's not a biggie, not a biggie at all. Nice and simple. And then what you do is you pick your camera like this. So let's say from the very beginning, I want to have that desk cam. So it's this one here, and I want to bind it to this one here. So I've picked pick dust here, and I pick this one here. You can see it's selected now, and I go Control B, and that binds the camera. But that's what would normally happen. Hap happen. That's what would normally happen. And if I go to my marker here, I can here bind camera to marker. So I do that, and it turns that marker into a camera edit point. Now that's important. I'll go over here and I'll say, right, well, I'll just go, let's say I want to have this for, say, about 36 seconds, and I want to change to the top cam. Now, in my brain, in my brain, I have to create a marker, and then, because it's already selected and that marker's there, I then go bind camera to marker. Okay, same as before. However, if you have your cursor in here and you just press Control B, it will automatically create you that camera marker. You don't need a marker. It creates one for you automatically. Now, I have no idea. That's amazing. That's fantastic. It basically chops out one small part of the process, but ultimately it's halving the time it takes you to do what you want to do. But I don't want that to be the top cam there, do I? No. What I want to, I need that top cam somewhere over here, don't I? When it's needed like that. So say from about there, but that's all right. Because I just take this and then I move it. And then I go over to here and say, well, actually what I wanted there was the bonnet cam. Bonnet cam over here, control B, and now it's bonnet cam. The bonnet cam till about there, say, and then we'll have the rear cam. So let's pick the rear cam. Cursor down here, control B. Now it's the rear cam. Doing a little bit of, a little bit of flutling around there. And then let's say, well, okay, well, let's now make that the wheel cam. So click that and control B and there's your wheel cam. And then here, let's make the long cam control B and we've got our long camera. Now we can see that our long camera has been passed already there quite a bit. So we'll go, right, okay, so let's, we've got this, then the bonnet, then the rear cam, then the wheel cam. And let's, where's our long cam? Well, let's put that there. So we can see where our car is. Well, let's see that our car has already passed the long cam so maybe we move the wheel cam over here and the long cam back here and uh, so we can see where the long cam is so the car's long cam is there so let's say we move the rear cam to there we move this to about here so it's doing that and then as soon as it's gone cut past there we go to the rear cam so it's zoom. And then we go to the wheel cam. So not too long on the rear cam. And so I'm basically editing in real time uh, exactly what I'm gonna get for my final result. So I now want the bonnet cam again. So let's go here and let's again pick the bonnet cam and go, let's put the bonnet cam in there, like that bonnet cam, and then we cut and we end up there. So if we end up running this backwards from the beginning and playing it, it's from, cut, cut, cut 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 and cut and that's it and here's the best thing is if i move this across to here and this is kind of like the proof of the pudding i'm going to change this to an image viewer and change this to the render result now you can see there's a bonnet of a car there because that's what i just was checking and how long it takes to render this it takes about seven seconds in ev which is fine it's um I, I actually wanted it to be two just because i'm just wanted to be two but if i go let's let's go to uh let's pick a good room if i pick that's unfortunately very similar to the one we've got okay let's go from this long frame here 107 and let's go here let's press f12 and let's render 107 now you can see the depth of field in there as well just so it looks a bit more dramatic um, and there you go. There's that. Uh, there's that frame in there. Let's just make that a bit smaller so we can see it. So there's frame 102, very quickly rendered in Eevee. And I think the motion blur settings are on, and I think they're pretty low. So let's just have a look in here. Motion blur. 
steps, tum, 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 let's make it six. Let's take that to center of frame again. Let's just render that again. I, I don't need to render this to prove a point. I just really want it to look a little bit nicer than it did. So let's just, <laughs> oh dear. This is what happens when you make short ones, they end up longer. There you go, it still looks pretty awful. But the point of the pudding is that if I now move this on to frame 110 and then press render in here, what do we get? Well, yes, we get the contents of 110. So now you can render all this out as you have it with your live edits created in your camera and you've got one long contiguous piece, which, you know, probably isn't that it probably wouldn't be considered a good way of doing it i know but the fact that you can do that i think is fabulous um i, I want to check at some point whether this works live inside of the non-linear editor inside of blender i'm pretty sure it probably will just to make me feel a bit like an idiot but i don't care i don't care um anyway so that's it if i just oh, let's just pop this let's pop this window back here uh, oop. and let's uh i'm gonna move that uh, camera back just a tiny amount and I like these not been on for too long it's just I know I'm not actually watching what I'm doing there but I'm just I'm just guessing it looks right mm. oh I'm just awful so let's let's set this to come in where you going let's put that there like this so we can just see our timeline and our cameras and I'm gonna go back here I'm just gonna press play and so you can, now you can see exactly the whole thing as it's going to doing it live in uh, in the camera view i am just so happy to find that so happy to find that um and it's a great way of doing your timings and making sure you got them right it's just brilliant anyway uh, that's it for this uh, very short one um i hope it's uh, some help to you it's staggering amount of help to me it's a great way of judging whether you're doing the right thing or not and um, I will uh, see you all uh, next time.